what's up? One sec, I gotta flip some camera stuff around. <clears throat> I just went ahead and made this public because why not? I'm just doing some basic stuff. Here's all the boxes of all the records that I just got over the past couple days. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see like this massive amount of records that I uh, I've bought over the last week. So I'm going to break those down, do a small amount of dishes. I have a ton of stuff in the fridge that needs to come out that's going to be gross. It's not like rotten or anything. It's just food that I don't like that Emily does like. So let me break down some boxes. show you my record collection here in just a bit too. I got like 25 new records. I think I've got 17 more coming. If you ever have massive amounts of boxes that you need to break down, never just break them down and put them in a pile. Grab one box that will be your box of boxes. So if you put all the breakdown ones in these, it makes them way easier to carry and way easier to put in your trash can or recycling. want to do some dishes but before I do dishes I need to clean out this nasty fridge I mean I say that but it's not really nasty it's just old food so it's not like what we do with hoarder houses it's just like corn This cheesecake has been in here since like, I don't know, January. This spinach dip stuff that's disgusting. Who's food? Go back. This is chicken pot pie that was good at one point, but not now. This stuffing can go. Tomato, more like tomato. No. <laughs> I don't know what 
that is. Your 24th melt that can go. gross. That's disgusting. Emily always gets these bags of um, like salads, but she doesn't eat them fast enough. And those are one of those things that you need to get and eat within a couple days. Otherwise they do this. They turn brown. And all of these are liquefying and turn brown. And they go bad really fast. I'm not holding on to well, yeah, two eggs. That's fine. I can do something with that. Come here, trash can. Those are homemade pickles, I think. drawer that everybody's got, which is a cheese drawer. Some of this stuff would say, and some of it can go. Cheese can have mold on it when it's made, but not when it's in my cheese drawer. could make for good like a uh, dog tricking into eating pills snacks. I typically have to do this stuff when Emily's gone because she saves crap like this. And we never, ever, ever, ever use it. So when she's gone, I toss that shiz. Another eye mask. We also typically don't store stuff like this in the fridge, but Emily likes it there. I store all canned goods in the actual pantry, but hey, if she likes them cold and she likes them to be in there, so be it. I've always heard that if you store um, canned goods in the fridge that it can tent them, but I don't know how true that is. <coughs> Where's my glasses? What's up, beans? Where's the date? Give me a dirt. Okay, there we go. Both those are good. All right. Cool. Let's see if there's anything freezer. This is how you know you live with somebody from or who has migraines. Because your, free, your freezer ends up like 50% ice packs. Every type of ice pack you could ever imagine is in this damn freezer. I don't know what that is. She saves all that for 
vegetable broth, but I'm tossing it. Broth crap. Oh, hey, more ice packs. All this shit's going. You will never use that in a million years. Oh, hey, look, more ice packs. Not keeping frozen corn. Hey, more ice packs. We live in a in a state that is pretty much all corn. There is no need to keep corn. She'd tell me if I threw fries away. What is that? What is that? Some sort of bread thing. Persimmon pulp. Booyah, baby. I can make me some persimmon bread and persimmon cookies. Those things stuck. That's good. It's unopened? Yep, that's good. More persimmon pulp? Yep. Ice packs I just threw on the floor. God. Oh, hey, another ice pack. Ice. Hey, Dakota, there's some ice eat that all right now let's take a look at the stuff that we took out of there which isn't much but remember we only have two people living in this house so we basically filled a trash can Ugh, gross some sort of yogurt thing Dip has got to go. Go, go. See, these are the ones I don't mind because you can just grab them and dump them without having to scrape the other stuff out. Except for that. Same with corn. We could have a moment of silence for the discarded cheesecakes. Salad. 
Okay, now I gotta take out this giant heavy thing. With milk, usually open that up slightly, squeeze it until all the air is out. Squeeze or turn it back, put the cap back on, and it takes up less room. Let me take this out real quick and I will be right back. Oh my god. I desperately need to clean my trash can too. It looks disgusting. I mean, I know there's, it's meant for trash, but damn. I'll actually come over and talk to you guys here in a second. I just wanted to get a ton of this stuff done so I don't have to worry about it. Emily's been gone for four days at a music retreat with her friends. I've had the house to myself for four days. And though I've kept it mostly clean, I always like it to be perfectly clean when she comes back. So she doesn't have to worry about anything. And there's no additional stress when she gets home. What are you doing? It's a neighbor, you idiot. It's the same neighbor that's been here for seven years. Emily's doing well. She's at a songwriter's retreat with her friends. I'm out of breath and I barely did anything. Okay. This should be quick. tell you this any of these dishes that are like really difficult to clean they are getting saved for Emily because she's the one who made this stuff she didn't make it for us she made it for her so she's going to burn spinach dip to the side of a pan she can clean the side of the pan
Dakota, what's up, man? Or lady? Oh. Yeah, Barbie's pretty awesome. I can't wait to get her down here this summer. I'd like to get her down here sooner than that, actually. That's Dakota's. She's just uh, laying out on the deck like a lazy butt. Here in a minute while those are soaking, I will take you into the record player and show you my record collection, what I've got so far. Jason is at his house. He lives across town from me. Hurry up and fill, oh my god. It's not that deep of a sink. Okay. Let's go in here and I will show you some records. And probably some cats. Yeah, there's Beans, and then Frank's sleeping down there, and then Dusty's in the massage chair. Let me pull you guys down a little bit. All right, records. Uh, start out with the new ones I got. I still have more coming. I ordered 17 more last night, and then I've got, I think, two or three more coming from, um, like, Amazon or some indie record stores. Uh, the two best Skid Row albums, REM's Green, which I've got a lot more REM in here, Primus, Pork Soda and the Brown Album, and I have Sailing the Seas of Cheese coming soon. Pearl Jam's Verses, I have all their other albums. I just, I thought I had this one already and I didn't, so finally I broke down and bought it yesterday. I don't care what anybody says, this is the best Metallica album ever made. This, in a lot of people's eyes, was in their bottom five. I think it's their number one. Bush, 16 Stone, awesome album. Also, uh, Alien is better than Glycerine. Lannis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill, one of the best albums ever made, period. Digital Underground Sex Packets. This is the one that's got Humpty Hump in the house, y'all. Ha <laughs> ha. First I limped to the side like my leg was broken. Uh, single soundtrack. Incredible soundtrack from the grunge era. The, mu the movie sucked, but the, uh, the soundtrack is incredible. Dave Matthews, Crash, and Under the Table and Dreaming, two of his best. Those, those I can listen to from beginning to end and not, not skip a single song. Same with Weezer's Blue Album, that's their classic. Lemonheads Come on Feel, probably their best album. 
Um, I also have It's a Shame About Ray coming. Um, it's still in the mail. Bowles lived through this. Incredible album. Crash Test Dummies, God Shuffled His Feet. That's another one I can listen to front to finish and not skip a song. Judgment Night Soundtrack, very hard album to find. Um, this was during the grunge era and also during like uh, gangster and horror rap. And so this, every song on this is a combination of grunge or metal with a rap group. And so you get like Pearl Jam and Cypress Hill, Booyah Tribe and Faith No More. Really good album. Best song on the album is probably uh, House of Pain and Helmet, Judgment Night. Original Crow soundtrack, one of the best soundtracks ever made. Put these to the side because I got more albums in here. Yeah. Let me get you guys over here. And then make sure you can actually see. I think I want to bring you down another another notch. Give me one sec. No, quit. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot better. This is all Emily's. I'm not going to go through those. She's got a lot of John Mayer stuff, which I also like. We've got The Best of R.E.M., Gin Blossoms, Dinosaur Jr., Offspring, Smash, that definitely their best album. Get over there. Matchbox 20. Steely Dan, Aja. Um, I do have their greatest hits coming as well. Uh, Journey's Greatest Hits. You don't have an album collection if you don't have Journey's Greatest Hits in it. Stone Temple Pilots Core and Stone Temple Pilots Purple. And Pink Floyd The Wall. I think this is better than Dark Side of the Moon. Dark Side of the Moon is an incredible album. I still like The Wall better. Alice in Chains Dirt, I have Jar of Flies coming, Mad Season, which is Alice in Chains, Screaming Trees, Pearl Jam, a whole bunch of different bands together. Days of the New, incredible album. Incubus, Pearl Jam's Vitalogy, Tin, Our Lady Pleat Pieces, Clumsy, Best Album Ever Made, Faith No More, Angel Dust. Um, this is one of the, the most intelligent sets of lyrics I've ever heard in an album. I've been a fa fan of Faith No More since they first became a band, and Mike Patton is the greatest singer who ever lived. Uh, but this is an absolute masterpiece. If I only had one album for the rest of my life, I would make it this one. Hermana's Nevermind. Nirvana's Bleach. Uh, I think that's Incesticide by Nirvana. Nirvana's In Utero. Nirvana Unplugged. Pantera. Um, this is Far Beyond Driven, I think. Yep. Pantera's Vulgar Display of Power. Smashing Pumpkin's Siamese Dream. Smashing Pumpkin's Gish. That's an incredible album, too. And the box set of Smashing Pumpkin's uh, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. I had to order a record holder, and it's meant for the floor. It's made of, like, uh, metal, graded metal. But I'm actually going to be taking the legs off and mounting it to my wall and then putting all the albums in that so that they're eye-level and easy to access. Yeah, Emily's stuff is like a lot of John Mayer. Some funny albums, like there's a Macho Man Randy Savage album in there called Be a Man. It's hilarious. And then she's got like a bunch of 60s stuff that I'm not into. 
And she's also into a whole bunch of indie music, which I'm also not into. Oh man, I'm old. All right, put you guys back up here. Take a quick vape break so I can actually look at comments. And then find out what Dakota's barking at because she's being an idiot. And then do some dishes. Colleen, hello. All right, let me pull you guys back up here and then flip my camera around. Booyah. Dakota, what are you barking at? Stop barking at children. She's barking at children because she's an idiot. Emily just ordered the Cheech and Chong one with the paper in it. It's just not delivered yet. I'm not, I've never been a fan of Sublime. I mean, I've, they're okay. I just never understood the gigantic um, fanhood behind them. I'm just not, not a huge fan. It's, it, Sublime is one of those bands that I tolerate. If somebody else plays it, I, I'm okay with it. But I think it's because everybody played it um, so much. Uh, Emily has Jethro Tull. I don't like Jethro Tull. I hate him. Um, I also am not a fan of Soundgarden or Audio Slave. Um, I don't know why. I just never got into them. I look for Kill Switch and Gage uh, on many places and have a hard time finding the one I want. Tools, the same thing. I'll be getting them, but they don't have the ones I want yet. What's my favorite Nirvana song? Probably Drain You or Tourette's. I'm very, very difficult to talk to about music um, for a couple reasons. So one, since I'm autistic, and I, th I assume this is just a function of autistic. When somebody asks, what's your favorite band? I don't have one. It depends on my mood and that will change from day to day. So I just talked up Faith No More's Angel Dust, but another day I may say it's Marvelous Three or Fountains of Wayne's original first release. Or I may say it's, uh, 10,000 Maniacs, Our Time in Eden, or Pearl Jam's 10. It really depends on my mood. It may be James Taylor. Um, so, yeah, it depends. It really depends on my mood. The other reason I'm hard to talk to about music is because I don't like a lot of the same stuff that most people like. I hate almost all music from the 1960s. There are... I could count on one hand how many bands from the 60s I like. I hate The Doors. I hate Led Zeppelin. Creedence Clearwater Revival, I hate. I, I just, that whole genre of music drives me crazy. Um, I don't like most indie music. I think the only indie music I've ever liked genuinely where I could play it all the time would be The Weepies and uh, Jonathan Colton. I don't like Rush. I love Pink Floyd. I hate almost all songs that have an organ in them. Any good modern music? Couldn't couldn't tell you. I haven't lived with modern uh, with music as a part of my life in a really long time, so like I don't get Taylor Swift at all. To me that just sounds like generic music like if an AI were to make just generic music that would be Taylor Swift to me to me her sounds her her music sounds like just the concept of music
Roger Waters or David Gilmore, both. And I don't even hate um, Taylor Swift. I just, I feel nothing. But that I understand that music's not made for me. So here's the cool thing, if you really put your thoughts into it. Almost all music is geared toward what people like in, say, we'll say like 10 to 13 years old to about 25-ish. Music is geared toward the emotional volcano that they are at that age. They are dealing with issues that people that age are dealing with, and they're not meant for people who are over the age of, say, like 25. They, I, that's not to say people who are over 25 can't like that stuff. It's just that's not the target audience for the music. So once you hit a certain age, not connecting with that music is natural because psychologically you're at a way different place than you were whenever you were in at 25 years old. So it's a good thing to disconnect from modern music because that's not meant for you. That's meant for your kids. Don't like Bowie. All right, I can't say I don't like Bowie. I just don't care about Mo Bowie. I like a couple of his songs, Hit and Miss, but most of, the, most of those come off of, like, the movie Labyrinth. <laughs> yacht Rock, I'm a, I'm a fan of most Yacht Rock from the mid-70s to mid-80s. We have some Queen, yeah. Sorry, I'm just reading a bunch of comments. Here in a second, I got to start those dishes. I also need to get some beard balm on. I'm starting to get fluffy. Yeah, I like uh, Stevie Nicks is good. So is uh, just Fleetwood Mac in general. I don't like classical music at all. I don't get it. I'll never understand it. It's just sounds to me. Yeah, it's always blueberry. That's part of my uh, autism. Once I find a thing, I can't switch from it. So it's always the same. This is called Steezy. And the blueberry, is it's called the blue, spelled B-L-O-U. Um, but yeah, once I find a taste, I have to, that's all I can do. So that's only the only vape juice I use. Yeah, jazz sounds like noise to me too. Eminem is hit and miss. I I like some of the stuff I've heard him do, and I've been a fan of his in the past. But I don't I don't have the rabid fandom that everyone else has. I want to point this down and start these dishes real quick, and then I'll be right back to uh, talking to you guys. We talked to a uh, floor guy that my wife knows. She knows their their whole family, and uh, we're getting ready to replace all that nasty carpet. I mean, if you've watched my videos for a long time, you've seen my carpet. Uh, but it's the same carpet that's been in here since we bought the house in like 2017, and we're getting rid of it finally. We don't have kids that live in the house anymore, uh, so we don't have to worry about them and their friends tracking over. And we've decided on doing porcelain tile that looks like marble. And it's not beveled tile, 
it's uh, that really fancy flat tile where you can almost not see ground lines. So we've got a price on that. I told him to go ahead and put us on the schedule and move forward with it. But at the same time, um, we've got this thing that I'll show you in a minute. It's a wall that separates our kitchen from our living room. And I want to take it out and put an island there. That can go in the trash. That was gross. So the whole thing is like, we're going to be converting my kitchen and my living room into one gigantic kitchen. And it makes more sense to do that first and then do the floor after our new stuff is placed. Then we're converting our garage. I've got a two car garage. We're going to be converting it into our new living room just to open up a massive amount of space and turn this place into what I want it, which is not an overload of the amount of rooms that we have. Um, we'll have the same amount of rooms that any normal house has, but it will be very large. But we've owned this house since 2017, and uh, And we've always wanted to do something special with it, but you can't really do that when you've got, you know, three kids living in the house. They're all teenagers because they just destroy everything they touch. But they've all been out of the house for a few years now. So I think it's time to finally just bite the bullet and say, all right, we're going to turn this into what we want it to be. We don't really care about, um, like, we're going to be modifying bedrooms and taking some bedrooms out and turning them into full-fledged offices and uh, people i've talked to have been like yeah but that'll devalue your house and it's like well if i was selling the house i would care but we're not selling it this is where we live i don't remodel my house and i don't design it or decorate it based on what it could get if i sold it i do it i remodel and i decorate based on what i like as a person because I live here. And so I'm not ever going to be a slave to uh, modifying the way I live in order to suit some imaginary market that doesn't even exist right now. The market only exists if I'm selling the house. But I, I know people who are like that. Are, they're like, well, we turned this into a bedroom and, and this into a second or third bathroom so we can add value to the house and it's like what you've just done is increase your property value your pro and which increases your property taxes and you've lived at that house for 15 years and have no plans on moving so like you don't have you never have guests so the spare bedroom or the guest bedroom is just there collecting dust so the way I see it it's like why not just turn that into something that you personally can use. So, like, I need office space, which I, that's what I've done. Emily needs crafting space, which we've done and are going to continue to uh, revamp and work on. Um, we don't need three bedrooms. We need one bedroom and a guest bedroom, which we have. And that's about it. I mean, we could use the second bathroom, but we already have that pretty much. I had to stick my kitchen curtains into my cabinets because it's so windy. It was like blowing them shut. 
they blow straight out, which means they put tension on the rod up there, which means that the curtain would start to go in. So when I was trying to do dishes, they'd blow into my face. So I just shut them into the cabinets up here. But it's so nice out that there's no way I'm closing these windows. It's like mid-70s right now. And then it's supposed to be the same thing tomorrow. something Emily doesn't have to worry about when she gets home and whenever I say that I don't mean um, that it's something she doesn't have to do when she gets home I mean it's something she doesn't have to worry about which means that just looking at a pile of dishes whenever you get home from a big trip is stress inducing so just not seeing them in the dish um, or in the sink is enough to reduce stress also I'm putting on my big awesome fancy watch There it is. Oh, God, that feels good. Just getting that crap out of the way. Here in a second, I'll take you guys upstairs to the office and talk to you for a bit. Yeah, this watch is really cool. I've got a friend who's got like a really high-end watch he's wanting to sell me, but i got to go to Indianapolis for it. I do play video games, though not as much as I used to. Um, right now, I just like relaxing games. So I'm playing the MetaQuest 3 Walkabout Mini Golf. It's VR. Um, and that's about all I've really messed with. I, I, liked, I got into Baldur's Gate 3 for a while, but time is an issue for me. Yeah, the watch is waterproof. Most watches anymore are waterproof. They just, it's pretty much standard. I played a lot of Stardew Valley. I have thousands of hours in Stardew Valley. I don't have a robot vacuum because our floors are multi-tiered. And part of them are carpet, Berber carpet. Part of them are, is hardwood. We got rugs everywhere. And so those things would just be a waste of money. Baloney, thank you. How many Ariad hats do I have? Quite a few. I'll bring you up in the office in a minute and show you. Oh, the pants? What brand? They're uh, True Religion. I don't wear them often. I've actually switched to mostly slacks now. Matt, thank you. What am I like with chaos? Um, I can't handle it very well. I typically, after doing anything, um, like eating out for dinner, uh, going to Walmart, clothes shopping or whatever, I have to, as soon as we get home, I have to go in my office, shut the door, and not talk to or see anyone. I, ha I have to be alone whenever I get home from that stuff. I used to have OCD tendencies, 
but I don't think I could consider myself truly OCD. I don't know. I guess I still do have those tendencies um, to a certain extent. Um, but it's not what most people consider OCD. Most people just consider I have to be clean OCD, and that's not what OCD is. Um, OCD is more like, at least my flavor of it, is I have to not step on a certain color of tile otherwise something bad will happen i have directions in my head that are good and bad left is bad right is good up is good down is bad and then i've got good and bad feelings for upper right upper left you know and it's that's more like traditional ocd so i guess i still do have it it's just that i'm not so obsessive over it that it becomes a um, deterrent in my life. It doesn't affect me like that. I guess you could say I'm functioning OCD. I don't have a specific mop that I like. I like Bona best. When I don't have that, just a plain old wool mop with a broom handle, with a like a wooden handle. Joanne, is va vaping bad for me? I didn't realize that. In what ways are vaping bad for me? Is it as bad as the 35 years that I smoked? What I've, what I've noticed about most vapors is that they do it because they don't know what's bad for you. But the second they know what's bad for you, they stop like that. <laughs> I want to take you guys up to my office with me. Let me unplug some chargers. Sorry, I gotta get, I'm tangled up in my cabinets with charger cords. Part of my OCD, um, if I've got any left, is that I can't let my phone get below 80% in charge ever. All right, sorry for this weird ride you're about to go on. Okay. Anybody puking yet from the motion sickness? All right, now let me unplug that. Throw this on the floor and worry about it later. Get off me. There we go. And then, all right, I'll show you my hats. There's some of them. Okay, now I need to pull you guys back down again. Almost done. I have to have the camera a specific way. There we go. All right. Yeah, the room I got, it's, um, that color is called Caribbean Dream. And I actually got it, it's an outside paint. And I've got my garage doors painted that color. And then I've got some stepping stones, some doors, my shutters are painted that color. And then I brought it in here and just started doing swoopy little designs. Then I, the original color of the room was actually this tan color, which is what I was wanting to cover up. So I got this in place, left this alone, and then painted that just a, a white. And then I made it swoop around the whole room like that.
Yeah, I haven't latched it. I need to. So yeah, Emily is at a music festival. She is, it's not really a music festival. It's a songwriter's retreat. And she doesn't do the songwriting part. Um, she goes down there and volunteers, and makes people coffee and hangs out with her friends. And then um, she was going to stay down there tonight because today's the day it ends. Um, and she's a few hours away from here. But she decided she had enough. And so she's going to come home late tonight. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to get some cleaning done, especially the fridge. Um, and then now that I'm all set, I can go get me just something junky to eat. Yeah, I want to, um, I'm going to um, pull my car out of the garage in a little bit and take my VR set in there and play some golf. I totally forgot, anytime you hear me hanging up on words and stutter stepping over words, it almost always means I haven't taken my meds yet. So, happy pill time. Jason is at his house. Uh, what meds do I take? Uh, black tar heroin. Black tar heroin and crack. Beans is in one of the other rooms. I made the bed and then he immediately jumped on it because cats are dicks. <laughs> yeah, I take, uh, take black tar crack. Sorry, I'm still reading comments. They're going by really quick today. Oh, the Neon Skull Candy Light. I think I got that off Etsy. I put in, I think I just Googled Skull Neon Light. And they're made out of like a, an LED that's flexible to make them look like neon. No, I don't clean my fridge on a schedule. Just whenever it gets like too much crap in it. I actually am going to have to run up the grocery store here in a little bit and replace a bunch of the stuff I just threw away. What household gadget can every house do without? A dishwasher. There's no need for a dishwasher. They take five times longer to clean dishes than you can by hand. Most of the time you got to rinse or clean dishes before you even put them in there. Matt, thank you. What do I get out of fixing people's houses like that? Um, I don't know, just a sense of uh, accomplishment. And it feels good knowing that they didn't have the skill set or the money to do what I was doing. So they were just having to live with that stuff. They were just having to tolerate it, and since I can afford to do it and I know how to do it, now they don't have to worry about it anymore. What's the most wasted space in every house? That's a good one. Um, probably the garage, and if you don't have a garage, it's probably... I would say most bedrooms are done, they're decorated badly. They're just cramming too much stuff in there. And 
the the thing I often see is people are way overloaded on the amount of clothing that they have. And so they waste a lot of space by having to have two dressers and their closets full and they've got clothes in tubs and clothes on the floor. And it's like you could out of the average household that I help, you could eliminate 80 percent of their clothing and they'd still have too much clothes. Hi, James. Man, those are going by quick. When I was a teenager, did I keep my room clean? That's a good one. No. Well, flip a coin. It, sometimes it was kept really, really clean, and other times I just let it go to hell. My mom had a rule. I could keep my room in any condition I wanted as long as the door was closed. And the second that that trickled out into the hallway, I had to clean the whole thing top to bottom. Marta, thank you. Uh, PC's right behind me. That is a uh, Starforge Creator Elite Pro. It's like the, the top, it's the most powerful um, Starforge that they make. And I basically I had to get that because I needed um, the processing and memory power to um, to process video for YouTube. Yvonne, how do you part with good quality clothing when you've been the same size since high school? Um, you have to make a decision on whether you want the space or the stuff more. I also um, look at my clothes about four or five times a year. And when I wasn't making this kind of money, um, when, back when I was poor, I would look at my clothes once every year or two and say, what haven't I worn in a full year? Like counting the current season. If I haven't worn it in a full year, it had to go. Um, now that I'm making more money, um, it's like, Four, four times a year, every three months or so, I'll look at them and say, what haven't I worn? And what do I only wear like if I'm lounging around the house because it's something I wouldn't wear out of the house. I get rid of that stuff too. Yeah, it, it all it all comes down to space and it all comes down to what you use versus what you don't use. If you're not using it, you're just having it just to have it. And that's that's when it becomes a problem. TK, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to could could we be having any a, any a tiny house? No. Not a chance. I'm six foot four, I need lots of space. A tiny house would make me feel claustrophobic. I also don't like minimal, minimalism at all. I'm never afraid of mice and bugs, no. I don't like them, but I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of them. Holy crap, hold on. Sophia, thank you. Um, Struggle with uh, disability or disabling mental illness and your stuff has made me feel a lot less ashamed about my mess at home. That's good. That's really good. And then Ford, hello. I love what you do and how you bless others. Thank you. Fortunately, I love what I do too. It's fun. It's my weird hobby. What's up, Crispy? Australia is one of the places that Emily and I are going to visit at some point. Probably, we'll probably visit several cities in, in Australia. I don't enjoy editing. Um, 
as soon as I'm done filming, if I can hi if I could find an editor who could make videos exactly the way I make them right now, I would hire somebody to do it. Especially in audio. Audio takes the most time because there's a lot of times where you'll get um, that sound of wet mouth where you can hear the popping of your T's and you can, when you make an L or a W sound, you can hear your tongue making wet noises. I actually edit those out by the microsecond. I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, but I'm getting ready to try out um, DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, so the dealing with ADHD is difficult, and I, I try to be empath empathetic and explain to people what's going on there. It also doesn't mean that you can't be frustrated by those actions, because understanding that you're ADHD from their point of view is only step one. I understand that I'm autistic. It doesn't mean that I can't go out into a crowd, and it doesn't mean that I can't put off meetings with people and that I can't go out to eat. I just have to prepare myself in certain ways and make it happen. So my wife is ADHD and she chooses not to work, which was a discussion between us. I'm fine with her not working, but she does have to do the stuff that I don't have time to do as part of our partnership. And so I understand that she's ADHD and she has a hard time doing those things, but that doesn't mean she can't do them. And so when she slacks, I have to confront her about it. Donna, thank you. And we never have arguments in confronting. I just have to stop and say, hey, look, I'm I'm doing all this. Um, I'm going 100 hours a week and I'm also doing the laundry and also the trash and also the vacuuming. Like you have to step in and take this stuff off my plate because it's becoming a problem for me to deal with all this. Once she realizes it from there, then she's like, oh, I didn't realize it was getting that bad. And then she jumps in and starts doing her thing. But. When did I get my diagnosis for autism? It was in 2017, I think. About seven years ago, I would have been 43 at the time. Now the crow, I never take things home from a client's house. Um, anything I show you that I've gotten new on here is stuff that I've bought. Very happy Mondays, that's a cool name, thank you. What made me get evaluated for my autism? Constant panic attacks. And then while I was talking to the psychiatrist, we realized I was autistic. Marcia, thank you. Hello from Brazil. Any special tips on how to deal with sentimental items? Having a hard time discarding stuff with my deceased mom's handwriting on it. Thank you for being such an inspiration. Um, yes, I've got a couple of things, uh, of tips for you. The most general tip is I think of items as memories. Anything that's a bad memory, like um, old bills, old insurance papers, um, old tickets from police or whatever, like those have to go. Anything that's a neutral memory that you look at it and you feel nothing, it has to go. Anything that you look at and you get a good memory from, that's what you keep. And then you would make a special box for those that's not piled under anything else. It's put in boxes and stored in a special place. Sheila, thank you. Um, the other thing is um, people often suggest taking photos of those old items uh, to keep on your phone. If you do that, make a backup uh, because there will be a point where your phone breaks and you've got to get a new phone and the people who try to transfer that stuff over aren't very good at it and you will lose some stuff. Uh, so I would typically take photos of the stuff and then get a Google Cloud backup or whatever, or just photos.com or whatever, whatever the hell. Google Photos is really good. Um, and then make up several backups. So you don't have to use just one backup spot, put it in several places. But as far as the physical items, break them down into memories. And the bad ones have to go. You don't want to be looking at anything like a, Let's say 
let's say my mom had cancer. I don't want to be looking at her old hospital bills from when she had cancer. That doesn't bring up a good memory of her. It brings up a terrifying, horrible memory of her. So that's got to go. Now, like an old picture, when I gave my mom a stone cold stunner and put her in the hospital with that, th that I'd want to keep because that's a good memory. That's when I said, listen up, son, you don't want none of this. And then she decided she wanted some of this. So I dropped her with a stone cold stunner while someone else took a picture. And then every time I look at that picture, it makes me laugh because she deserved it. I got good tea going on today. I used to be able to blow smoke rings, but I, I've never, I haven't tried in years. Matt, thank you. When it comes to control and needing the comfort of total order, I've gone from seeking 100% to settling for 99.9. .9. It's much more attainable. I mean, anything that's less than 100 is a start. Um, I typically have some basic rules of thumb whenever it comes to you, just your overall stuff. When it comes to dishes, I've mentioned it on videos that um, I keep enough dishes to cover Thanksgiving and then anything beyond that's too much. When it comes to clothing, I keep about two weeks worth of clothes and then I have maybe five or six special outfits and then nothing more. And then again, I reevaluate it after a couple months. So three months from now, I just bought a bunch of new clothes. Three months from now, I'll look at that all again and say, what haven't I wore? What was my least favorite out of all this stuff? And I will start getting rid of some of that stuff, even if it's good. Because if I'm not wearing it, what's the point? And so there's a lot of stuff that looks good on the rack, even looks good whenever you're in the changing room and you're trying to try the stuff on. But when you get it out in the real world, it's just something you don't wear very often. So at that point, it's not a good idea to keep it. In fact, it's harmful to keep it um, because now it's just taking up space for no reason. What's my junky food of choice? I will eat a foot long and a six inch in one setting of ham and cheese on wheat with provolone, lettuce, tomato, mayo, and black olives from Subway, um, but I will, I will eat a full 18 inches of sandwich in one sitting. I also like certain pizza, but I'm picky about my pizza. Um, so I don't mind, I won't even say it cause it's local, but there's a local pizza place that's decent. There's a place in Austin called Pius that has some of the best pizza I've ever had. Otherwise junk food wise, I eat a lot of Slim Jims. I like beef jerky if it's not sweet and if it's tough. I like it. I like beef jerky to be tough and not soft. I like um, hazelnuts and pistachios. Uh, what's some other things? There is a candy bar that is square and it has whole hazelnuts in it. And I eat the crap out of those things. Butter pecan ice cream. It's not chunky, but it's shaped like chunky. It's and it's thinner. But I, I find them at Walmart. It's the only place I've ever found them, which is funny because Walmart's not exactly known for like luxury chocolates or anything. <laughs> Well, Nora, I want to bring up a point about medical records. Do not throw away your medical records away. After 10 years, the hospital or medical facilities destroy the information. Back them up digitally. You don't need to save every little thing. If it's an ongoing problem, if you got cancer for 10 years, 
If you've got ongoing health problems that are severe, keep paper copies of those. Don't collect paper copies of those. Don't keep all of your medical records that are redundant. What's my real name? I want to name my firstborn son after you. My real first name is pronounced. <laughs> but it's spelled, it's spelled J-I-M. It's just an old Dutch pronunciation. There's also, oh, junk food, the best chips I've ever had are um, potato skins, uh, bacon and cheddar. I find those at uh, Menards. They, find, they have family-sized bags, and I'll buy those and eat them all in one sitting. Lady, hello, thank you. A little thank you for the help you've given me. Hope all goes well at the upcoming surgeries. Thank you. Yeah, we go on March 12th um, to get the consultation. This is actually the second time she's had the surgery. She will likely have it um, about once every 10 years or so. And so she knows what's coming up. It's not a minor surgery. I mean, it's literal brain surgery um, to remove a pituitary tumor. Um, it's called a pituitary adenoma. And then um, so we get the console on the 12th of March, and then just whenever they have time to schedule. It could be a case of them saying, come back next week. It could be like the first time she had the surgery where it took like five months before they could get her in for it. So um, once she is in there, she will be in the hospital for like 15 days, 10 to 15 days. And instead of me being there with her during that 15 days, <clears throat> she's uh, flying her mom down that way I don't have to stop making money while this happens because this is even with insurance, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars in bills. And so I can't really stop working while this is happening. Um, so I will still be here. Well, then we need somebody to take care of the three cats and dog that we have. I also employ Jason. So I need to be here to make sure he's working and earning a check. Um, so yeah, we, her mom will be there with her and then I'll be here and then I'll basically have my phone on me nonstop so that it's not so she can update me about the process. It's because she'll be laying in bed bored and watching TV and making like jokes and stuff and pointing out stupid stuff that she sees in the hospital over messenger. Uh, how's Daniel? No idea. I gave him a business for Christmas. I heard from him about twice since then and then never again. <laughs> so I, I talked about this on Discord a little bit earlier. I'm the type of guy that if I don't initiate a conversation with people, I would never hear from them again. <clears throat> I am just the type of guy where when somebody talks to me and they say, hey, how's it going? It's been forever since we talked. I know there's a favor coming up. It's going to be, can I borrow some money or can I... Um, hey, I've got a friend who's trying to get into YouTube. Can you teach them how to do it? Um, I've got a friend who blah, blah, blah. Can you fix this for them? And so I, I don't have what you'd call real world friends. My, my one true real world friend lives in Nashville and we see each other like twice a year, maybe three times. I'm going to go down there in April. But yeah, I've, I've always just been back when I partied and I drank a lot. Um, when I still drank, then I had friends everywhere because they wanted to come over and get drunk with me. But once I quit drinking, they all just kind of scattered to the wind and now I'm just a homebody. The record store owner is my buddy, but we don't hang out. Like we don't, he doesn't come over and visit. We don't really talk to each other much outside of whenever I go buy records. It's I don't, I don't have people who come over to visit me. 
or a call to check and see how I'm doing. I don't have people who just send me random texts um, just to BS around. I, I don't really have that. Yeah, I've always just, if if I had my way, I would just not leave the house hardly ever. No, it's not, I mean, I, I don't mind, I wouldn't mind having friends that came over and hung out if they had the same interest as me, but I'm, I'm actually kind of content with being a homebody. I don't really do anything outside of the house, outside of, you know, going to do the cleanings and stuff, but I'm, I've always been kind of a, especially once I quit drinking, I, I lost like the social interest. And so I don't really have a, des a large desire to hang out with people. Do my other kids have nicknames? Here's a behind the scenes thing. I'm sure most of you know this already. I just made those nicknames up for the videos. Like none of them really have nicknames. That we shorten things down. So we call Jason J. Uh, we call Adrian Adri. Uh, Drew's real name is Andrew. And we, so we just call him Drew. So we just have shortened versions of their names. Uh, we don't really have nicknames for each other. I just kind of picked out nicknames that were the opposite of what they actually were in real life just to make it funnier. So calling Jason filth is hilarious to me and hilarious to Jason. And then uh, thug for Adri, she's like five feet tall. Um, she's a tiny little shit. <laughs> so the idea of her being a thug at all is hilarious to me. Aloha means tons of things. That's one of my favorite all-time dad jokes is so stupid. It's the dumbest joke. And it's uh, taking a name like Mac and somebody saying, what's Mac short for? And I'll say it's short for Mac. I need another glass of tea here in a second. Man, and I memorized like three people's names. I'm, I'm very bad with names. Very, very bad with names. So I, I recognize people's um, profile pictures, but not a lot of their names. But there were three people specifically I've been waiting to pop up in here because I found out that I can gift people memberships and they've been around my channel since the very beginning. And I specifically want to gift them memberships. I've only got a couple that I can give out, but they're specifically uh, people. Oh. All right, one sec. I got to go get some tea. Otherwise, it's just me staring at this, <laughs> this phone, which is not going to make for the greatest of lives. Uh, one second, I'll be right back. God, it feels so good outside. It feels so good to actually have 
the windows open. <sighs> Probably not for the neighbors because I'm not wearing pants. Or maybe it is. <laughs> I say that after clearly walking in here wearing pants. Yeah, it's supposed to be even warmer tomorrow. It's supposed to be like in the mid to upper 70s. I think I'm going to get the car out, put the top down, and it's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, I should show you guys my car um, because I, I, I detailed it. Uh, if you're on Discord or follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this, but I finally detailed it yesterday, I think. Let me turn this around. See if I can back up and get a better picture of it. I got too many boxes in this place, so I'm going to have to step around them to get a good shot. God, I love the front end of this thing. And then I got new floor mats with the SS symbol on them. Got all the dash, everything, armor roll. All the windows done and re-nexed. That would be one of my wife's many, many uh, jingling things, wind chimes that she hangs everywhere. They drive me crazy, but she likes them, and they don't drive me crazy enough to like flip me out. So I don't, I don't complain about them. Yeah, so I'm, that's, you saw how big the, the garage is. It's a two-car garage. So that is, um, after I get off here, I'm going to get something to eat. And then I'm going to pull that car out of there and bring in my VR set and do some MetaQuest 3 in the garage. It's going to be awesome. Shit, speaking of Ari, I need to email her and ask what type of uh, camera she uses, because I know that she uses her phone a lot, but she also has a DSLR camera, and I want something that can film really high-end video. Like, my phone will film up to 8K at, at uh, 30 frames a second. It also, um, it'll film uh, 4K at 60 frames a second on the front and back. This is a really, really nice phone. But I know there's some DSLR cameras that look really, really good. And part of the problem with um, the phone that I'm using is that it kind of exaggerates colors. And I kind of like that in some places, and I kind of like don't like it in others. And I could get like an editor hired to do color correction. But I don't have time. Uh, to sit there and do color correction. I would have to hire somebody to do it. And if I'm hiring somebody to do that, I want them to do all the editing. Yeah, we hit 450,000 subscribers this morning. Yeah, Ari only temporarily lives in the States. She's down in... Uh, Miami for just a few months and then she's going back to uh, to Finland She's invited me to do a collab. I just I don't have time to go down there And I am NOT wearing a scrub daddy shirt. <laughs> I'm just not I'd wear all the pink and black in fact I'd put on uh, I, I'd put on the full-on leggings and sparkly shoes, but I'm not wearing scrub daddy t-shirts What's up, Jules? Yeah, we actually, I've got Emily helping me track down the full-blown um, 
Ari Katarina uh, shoes and, and the whole outfit because I was thinking about on April 1st doing a video where I'm dressed with like her shoes and all. We found a, a pair of the shoes that may be able to fit me. Um, I, I probably will have to get the a braided wig, which I, I basically buzz my hair anyway, so it, it would actually look like my hair was blonde and braided rather than just that cheesy fake wig that everybody does whenever they put on wigs. It, it always looks fake. So I'm thinking about doing a full-blown thing where I don't even call attention to it. I may say trass, uh, pick up the trasses. Um, I'm still mad that somebody taught her the correct pronunciation of squeegee because she used to say squeegee. And I, whoever taught her the correct pronunciation, we are mortal em enemies now. Oh, also, I commissioned Adrian to do four shirts. So we, we will have four new shirts coming up very soon. Um, we, the four shirts are Live, Laugh, Die. Um, I'm having her make a cartoon moose that's trying to smile, but it's a moose, so it can't. So its smile will be like... Um, and then I'm making her or I'm having her make me one that is an MMC brand canned moose face with a, a cartoon of a canned moose face. And then another one of a can of green beans um, that's like MMC brand green beans with like a 1998 expiration date on it. And it'll say, let the green beans go, man. Nice. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, and then soon we're going to be gutting another house, drywall and floors. Um, we're not going to do that right away because I don't want to have a set of DIY videos that took a month. It was four weeks on the DIY ones. Then we just had two videos of the hoarder who was already clean. It just needed super organized and packed. I don't want to do another one that is devoid of cleaning. So right now I'm looking for a place here in my town that is specifically dirty so that we have to actually do some cleaning because I don't want the channel to change. And I also don't want to get rid of what we've been doing lately because I really like those videos. So I'm trying to spread it out to where it'll be like a DIY repair type video to fix up a house that's dilapidated. Then um, one that's super cluttered and takes a bunch of organization. And then one that's got like genuine dirt and like really uh, caked out with nasty stuff so that we can, you know, have different style videos going. Um, I got two vapes. Somebody asked if I was double fisting them. I had one that was opalescent purple. It died. And so whenever I went to get a new one, I was like, I can afford two vapes. So in case one of these dies, I've got a backup. And also I can vape twice as long without having to change coils. So that is my first world solution to a first world problem. Yeah, I should actually make a corn shirt. That would be super easy to do. Do one that's got like a house that's surrounded by a gigantic field of corn. So the, the shirt would be 90% cornfield with one little house right in the middle of it. And then um, have the phrase like what nearby store. Yeah, population corn, that would be a good one. Do it with an MMC sign on it. MMC, population corn. You quit vape farting. Vape fart. Sorry, if you guys ask a question and I don't catch it, it's totally fine to repost the question. Just don't spam them.
Um, the, these go by really quick. So it's, if I stop and I scroll back up to your question, 50 more messages will appear while I've been scrolling and then I, I get way behind. I've heard of Morris, Illinois, but I don't know if I'm close to it or not. If I don't know if I'm close to it, I'm probably not. Lisa, I have thought of doing a voiceover as Beavis and Butthead. Um, I don't think Mike Judge would care, but there is a possibility that I could possibly get a copyright strike for that. But also, it would, it would annoy most people. But would well, I go back to a house I previously deep cleaned to do a DIY? Possibly, yeah. Do I help people virtually? No, not really. It's a just a matter of time. Like even doing this right now is taking away time that I I could be doing something else with the channel. But since this is basically for the channel, I feel good about doing it. Plus, I, I like to catch up with everybody and like actually talk instead of just narrating at you. Yeah, I'm sure that I could get away with the Beavis and Butthead thing. It's just I think it would annoy a lot of people. I may do it as a members video or something. Crystal Lake, there's a frightening place. How do you clean out your house when you're going through a divorce and your headspace is bad? Use it as a place to clear your head. Put on the happiest music you can find, the bounciest, most dance along with it music you can find, and make it an event. Um, the biggest thing is mindset. So what I do if I'm down and I need to clean is I consider it um, like a treatment of sorts where I'm not cleaning the house. I'm redecorating it to make it mine. I'm looking around the house and saying, I need to make this more my stuff. And so I start redecorating, packing up old things, uh, going through stuff and thinking, is this a bad memory, you know, and making it an event. But the happy music curtains wide open so you can get some sunlight in there and you'll be shocked at how much that changes your mood. A super happy band like Slipknot. Or Mazzy Star. I've got a couple tiaras that I could wear. Or Emily does. I mean, fade into cleaning. What I should do is actually do the collaboration with uh, Ari, but then show up in this outfit. Oh, wait, we're not done. There's a hat and shoes. There's the hat. And there's the shoes, baby. Take it in. Take it in. If I spin kick somebody with these, they would end up in the hospital. They would need a face transplant. I so where did I find it? I put it together. I those shoes popped up on Facebook as a random ad, and, and it was like things you may be interested in. And, and I was like, "Am I?" And so I ordered the shoes immediately because they're so weird. Um, and then I thought, "I'm going to find an outfit that goes with that, but is horribly mismatched at the same time." So the shiniest stuff that I can find except it, do, it it doesn't really go together. And then I'm just going to put that on on Christmas morning and come down without telling anybody that I've even got the outfit. So that's what I did. No one knew I had the outfit. It's just I excused myself to my office, 
said, I'll be back in a second, came back downstairs and was wearing that. Tammy, you can't clean it at all. It's pretty much all plastic. Yeah, I've got merch. It's in um, the descriptions of all my videos. And then it's on the uh, description of the channel, too, on the main channel page. Oh, shoot. I got to do a laundry flop here in a minute and trim up this fluff. Holy crap, we've been hanging out for almost two hours. It didn't seem that way. I ought to run for mayor of my town and wear nothing but that outfit. I mean, if you don't vote for that, you don't deserve to vote. Do I like Iron Maiden? I have never understood the love of Iron Maiden. I respect Iron Maiden, but I don't like Iron Maiden's music, no. But it's the same thing with Jimi Hendrix. I respect Jimi Hendrix, but I don't like his music. Ursa, thank you. There's a lot of people like that that I respect, but I don't like their stuff. I respect Eddie Van Halen. I don't like his music. Um, same with Eric Clapton. And um, who was the other one that was big? Oh, shit. I can't think of it now. But Flavor Flav is awesome. Queen is awesome. Steve Vai is another one that I respect a lot and think he's one of the greatest guitar players who ever lived. But I, I can't just put on a Stevie, a Steve Vai album and... James Taylor's awesome. I used to be into Ozzy, um, but I got burnt out because I played it too much. Okay, guys, I, I have laundry to do. Um, I've got to get off here. i got to do some laundry, and then I've got to figure out something to eat, and then I am going to take some me time in the garage to play my MetaQuest 3 and uh, do, some, uh, do some golf. Also, if you are just getting into the live and you didn't see it earlier and you had questions about the bands that I like, I went through my record collection. So it's right after I run water for the dishes. Right after the sink is filled, I, I go right into the uh, living room and go through records. So if you want to see what I have in my personal collection, I've uh, just started recollecting records and I have 17 more albums on the way. Um, that I ordered last night. So, but thanks you. Thank you for everybody for hanging out. Um, I will, what is today? Sunday. I will see the members on Tuesday or Wednesday, and then I'll see everybody else. Excuse me. Uh, this coming weekend later.